Hello, everyone, and welcome to this book reveal of Learn to Fly, a new book that has just appeared to our minds. Full title, Relax, Let Go, Move On, and Learn to Fly. Here it is. On the back of the book is a short uh, explanation of what's inside the book. Just read that for you. Learn to Fly is the first book from the Great Meditation Trail series written during the COVID-19 lockdown of 2020 and 2021. I invite you to travel on an outer and inner journey. Hear stories from my first trip to Nepal. Enjoy meditations inspired by these experiences. So when this book arrived at my house uh, several days ago, was it yesterday? Not long ago, it was kindly brought by a DPD driver. He was the last in a long chain of many people who've brought this book into existence. In fact, countless people, this book has arisen in dependence upon causes and conditions, many, many causes uh, and conditions have brought this book into existence. It is a collection of parts. There's many parts to this book. There's actually eight chapters in this book, and these eight chapters correspond to the eight weeks of the new Mindspace Plus course starting next week, week beginning September 13th. There's a live stream on the Monday. And then Tuesday in Sutton Caulfield, Wednesdays in Tetson Hall, and Thursdays in Surly Hall, there will be in-person classes. We will be exploring the content of this book. I shall be reading from the text and then guiding meditations based on it. So it's arisen in dependence upon causes and conditions. It is a collection of parts that have come together. And we now say, this is a book. We impute book. And here it is. And we can enjoy, hopefully, you can enjoy reading it. Uh, if you are interested in hearing the book, at the back of the book, there is a link to accessing the audio book online as well. So this is a little bit of a reveal of this book that has just arisen from Space Like Emptiness. And I wanted to do a short reading as well for you from the preface of the book. And also, if you can bear with me, the introduction, just to give you an overview of what's going on. Here we go. Preface. During the COVID-19 pandemic, even the most seasoned explorer hesitated to dig out their passport, the paperwork needed, the health risks and lockdown restrictions upon arrival meant most tucked themselves away until further notice. As humans, outer journeys ground to a halt, nature and its wildlife were given the opportunity to come to the fore, and they didn't disappoint. We saw clips of Kashmiri goats descending from the Welsh mountains, playing in the streets and dining out on overgrown front lawns. The perpetually murky waters that flow through Venice were clear for the first time in living memory. Tens of thousands of flamingos were happy to rest in the ordinarily 
busy and hectic wetlands around Mumbai. In the Pearl River Delta between Macau and the ever bustling Hong Kong, where usually hordes of tourists and gamblers would be rushing back and forth in noisy boats, pink dolphins when they're able to enjoy and play in the waters. One journalist proclaimed, it's nature's reset. Some commentated that reports were exaggerated and these natural occurrences would happen anyway. Still, it was encouraging to see glimpses of positivity appearing during such a challenging time. The curtailing of our outer journeys brought new opportunities, new paths, new perspectives. Go near, travel companies suggested, looking to pivot and adapt their businesses to the external restrictions. During this time, while casting my vote at the local election, I spoke to a lady outside the booth about life during the lockdown. She told me, I've lived around here many years. During COVID, it's been my first time going around the local nature reserve. Really, I've been taking me dog out every day. All this on my doorstep, I've slowed down and been breathing different, watching the trees change color. Before like, whenever I start work, I'd be jetting off to some fancy beach in Spain. Sometimes I'd come home from Spain or whatever, stressed out, thinking about where me next holiday will be. I'm blethering again, but you know what? We've got what we need right on our doorstep. After chatting with the lady about our times during lockdown, I took a voting form into the booth. I looked at my options while recalling the words of a teacher who once said, always vote. Even if you don't agree with any of the parties, create the causes in your mind to take rebirth in a democratic country. With the blunt pencil, I made my crosses, folded the paper and slipped it into the ballot box. As I left, I pressed down on the hand sanitizer by the door and enough liquid came out to cover both my arms and legs. ta da a bit, I said as I headed out of the voting station, wiping the alcohol through my fingers and onto my wrists. ta da a bit, watch how you go, the lady said with a warm, kind smile. It was during the pandemic that I began working on this book and subsequent series. It started as an introduction to the world of meta a Pali word for loving kindness. I felt it would be a helpful topic, topic and we could deepen our experience of it during this challenging time. While writing the draft, I recounted a story from my trip to Nepal back in the mid nineties. It made me think of the live in-person classes when students would ask to hear about this time. When stories were recounted, I could see they worked well to convey a theme or meaning from a teaching. I began to write about when I first traveled to the remote village where I'd be volunteering. The bus I'd been on for 28 hours could go no further due to the river rising. And I recalled how we attempted to cross the wide flowing waters. Reviewing the story, I thought, well, what happened before that? How did you end up there and what happened after? So I started sketching memories and they seamlessly linked around the theme of meta. One story led to the next and one meditation led to the next. With fewer distractions coming from no external travel, memories and stories like the flamingos on the wetlands of Mumbai happily came home to roost on the waters of my mind. When I'd finished writing my first book, Guide 
to the mindful way of life, I sent out a celebratory confirmation email notifying students of its upcoming release. I remember the first reply to the email around 10 minutes later saying, without salutation or introduction, disappointing, I thought it would be about your life. It made me chuckle that the first message was one of disappointment after I'd spent over a year working on the book. It did. However, plant a seed. Do this book, which is the first from the series entitled The Great Meditation Trail. I've taken an inner and outer journey from my writing chair. Revisiting locations, people, and encounters. But more than that, I've been able to apply meditations to these experiences using what I've learned over the last 25 years since that first trip to the East. When I visit schools, I often say at the beginning of the session, especially when teaching sixth formers, if I was sitting where you were when I was at school and someone like me came into the hall and started talking about the benefits of meditation, I most probably would have paid little attention. The content would have washed over me and I would have forgotten everything the moment the session had ended. I usually go on to say something like this. Try not to be like that. Try not to be like me. What I'm about to tell you could radically transform your mind both now and in the future. Get ready for what's coming. Don't just react to the stress as, as it arises. Get in there before it does. Develop a personal intention and global perspective far broader than yourself and your worries. For meditation to affect me at the age of 18, I needed something unforgettable. I needed to leave my everyday life to escape the safe suburban existence I needed to learn the art of meditation, to learn how to fly in my mind with the snow-peaked mountains as my backdrop and the company of hundreds of Tibetan Buddhist monks. I needed not just a breathing meditation to calm my nerves, but mind training practices that would literally blow the negativity and neuroses out of the water. I needed more than to read about the benefits of a simple life in a book, but to see with my own eyes from living examples how to lead a simple life, to experience living and working in a remote village with virtually no access or connection to anything in the modern world, to understand that happiness depends upon the mind. I needed to see people smiling for no apparent reason other than they were happy inside. Now I'm here standing in front of you and passing on what I've learned, which I found so beneficial and seen to be so helpful in thousands of lives. But don't believe me. Check for yourself like I did when I was your age. If the practices and what I say resonate, consider how you can integrate them into your life. Having an introduction like this, especially when faced with 217 to 18 year olds, usually helps to grab the attention. With this book, course, and series, you can take both the outer journey for inspiration by reading the stories from the trip and an inner journey to change your mind by practicing the meditations at the end of each chapter. If you can integrate the meditations into your daily activities, the training will begin to transform not just your life, but the lives of those around you, your community, and finally, the lives of all living beings across the world. I invite you as the reader to travel to these places with me, to gain insight into the culture and people and be inspired just like I was to journey along the path of meditation 
to inner peace. So thank you very much for your kind attention. And I hope to see some of you on the new course. If you wish to find out more information about the book and course, see the links below. Bye for now.